It's the 10th round of the Tata Steel 2021 chess tournament, and today's an exciting one because we have Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana, which is the rematch of the 2018 World Chess Championship. Anytime they play each other is exciting. I also have games by Andrei Yesipenko, the junior, who's broken out into the field, beating Magnus Carlsen a couple rounds ago. Maxim Vachelagrav looking to bounce back from his slump, and Anish Giri the local hero. So first things first, the World Championship rematch. Here we go. Fabiano starts with d4. Uh, Magnus goes knight f6. And I should just say that I really hope that there was no lag in the beginning of the video. The past few recaps, it's been happening. And I don't know why, because I always test in the first few seconds. And it ended up just two times in a row. So if there was a lag this time, listen, I love you. And I am apologizing. So Fabiano Caruana plays the move g3. He's looking for bishop g2 and knight f3. This is known as the Catalan. Magnus Carlsen plays d5. Knight at more exactly as I said. And now bishop to b4 check. Black can play bishop e7, bishop b4. Black can also take on c4 in these positions. The point is to make white put a bishop awkwardly in front of their own king and then slide the bishop back to d6. To the uninitiated, this just looks like it's bogus. Uh, but again, Black is sort of saying, well, I could have put my bishop here, but I like the fact that you've awkwardly put this guy here. Now you can't put your knight there. And there is some meta strategies going on in, in, in this case. But after that, Magnus Carlsen castles his king, and Fabiano plays the move bishop to g5, and volunteers his bishop for capture, and then plays the move queen to b3. Fabiano is delaying the move short castle, although he does it on the very next turn, and Magnus voluntarily retreats back to e7. So let's take stock of this position. What is going on? Well, white has developed every single piece that they could have possibly developed. And in the Catalan, you put your queen out onto the queen side to pressure this b7 pawn. Black is extremely solid, having the little, you know, pyramid. You can extend it all the way to, to this. Very pretty. Uh, but the bishop is very bad. And you're going to have to get this bishop out by playing b6 and bishop b7 and looking for a break c5 or e5. White, meanwhile, will either look to gain space or play the break e4 to open up this diagonal for their bishop. Let's see what happens. Fabiano chooses both of those ideas. He plays c5 and then e4, but Magnus Carlsen plays b6, and there's a tension here amongst the pawns. We get e takes d5, e takes d5, and now rook e1, queen f6, and Fabiano Caruana detonates his sacrifice on d5. Takes, takes... Rook slides over, and he plays c6. Looks like, oh, wow, this is going to be a swashbuckling contest between two hungry grandmasters looking to assert dominance, the number one and two in the world. But Magnus Carlsen says, I don't need to indulge in, in any of that. I just take my knight, take back. And um, what happens now is Magnus Carlsen is down a pawn, but he's very active. He's counterbalancing this. Even with this capture, he's counterbalancing this position with the fact that White's extra pawn is in this four on three. It's this E pawn, but it's not going anywhere. And watch as Magnus defends this position. He immediately takes control of the open files. He's got the queen always threatening to, to walk in. He's got bishop pressure on the pawn. And essentially what he has here is dominance over all of White's entry points into the position. He then begins, he even goes for a queen trade voluntarily, even though he's losing by one pawn, because he's constantly threatening to break in and just, you know, like a, like a horse in a living room, just kick everything over, uh, break the sofa, break the table, and then, you know, take back his extra pawn. He also, of course, uses his queenside pawns to push away and chip away at Fabiano's structure. Fabiano goes for a rook trade. Now Magnus Carlsen does not indulge. Fabiano would love a trade like this uh, because even if Magnus were to take on a2, for example, this would allow Fabiano, for the cost of one pawn, to activate his rook and hunt down Magnus's weaknesses. So you see this, this counterbalance in all endgames of material versus activity. So Magnus Carlsen doesn't do that and continues to pressure, doesn't allow Fabi's rook out, uh, and after rook c2, rook b4, the queenside pawns end up be being the difference, right? Magnus activates all his pieces to their maximum, and look at this, he stayed so patient for a moment that Fabiano has three extra pawns. I mean, it's kind of a fake three extra pawns because both these pawns will be picked up, but one pawn is gone, and then the players here just simply repeat it. And it's crazy because Fabiano simply cannot do anything. There is nothing he can do. Like, bishop g4 attacking his rook, he moves away, and bishop comes back to f5. And the game is just a draw. His only alternative is to sacrifice this rook, which obviously he is not going to do. So Magnus holds down Fambi. Uh, even though Fambi's got the two extra pawns with the uh, activity of the pieces, the constant pressure, instructive game. You guys know when I, I call out, you know, these instructive moments in games. And it's a little bit disappointing, obviously, that the world number one and two with this intense rivalry uh, drew the game in three hours. They were the first ones done. 
but uh, what can you do? You know, that's life. Another person who was for, uh, almost done first is uh, Maxim Vashelagrov, who going into today's round was tied for last place, which is crazy because Maxim is currently leading the tournament of the candidates, which is the tournament to determine who will play Magnus Carlsen in the next World Championship match. If you are not aware, it was paused because it took place right when coronavirus was getting started, really, in March of last year, uh, and it was paused halfway, but he is currently the leader, so it's crazy to see this, and he is playing... Alexander Donchenko, who obviously is uh, is a, a, a touch lower rated than, than the other participants and also was a last minute replacement. He plays a Karo Khan with black and, and uh, MVL plays uh, the fantasy variation. Uh, Donchenko plays E6, which is something that I recommend in my Karo Khan course. Link in the description. Nudge, nudge. Knight to C3 and Bishop B4. Bishop D2, Knight E7. This is a very standard way for black to develop the position here. Bishop D3, B6. And Donchenko volunteers this bishop for capture and castles. Why does he give away this bishop? Well, because white's bishop on c3 is hardly doing anything. It's stuck between the pawns. Bishops like open space, which is exactly why MVL went for f4. The problem is that even with this explosion of the position, look at this, MVL's going for queen h5, ed5, and queen takes h7 mate. Donchenko accurately trades off his bishop, going for the trade here, uh, shuts down the dark squared bishop, and then says, wait a second, I don't got to trade with anybody. Let me just roll these pawns down the board with c4. Look at this move, bishop a5, defended by the queen on the other side of the board, attacking the queen. This game was a weird one. Uh, it was a very strange game. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why. So knight c6 attacking the bishop, queen c5. At this point, Maxim Vashilagrov is completely lost. He is completely lost with the white pieces after 15 moves, which is astounding. That that is actually crazy. Donchenko pushes in, attacking. The bishop has to slide back. Now we get this this. One move from Donchenko, and, and MVL is never castling. I mean, of course, it's a sacrifice of a pawn, so Donchenko just activates his rook to try to get rook down to b2. So now b3, and rook to d8, trying to push the pawn to d2. Here, apparently, Donchenko had to lash out with f5. A nice move, targeting this pawn, and MVL has a very unpleasant choice. Does he take or does he push, right? Uh, and if he pushes, this gives the d5 square... So this would have been this would have been very bad for MVL. I don't know. Did I just say Donchenko had a bad choice or MVL had a bad choice? Sometimes I say the wrong name. I hope I didn't say the wrong name. So rook d8, but this gave MVL time to castle. And then when Donchenko pushed this pawn forward to attack uh, the rook with the bishop from the distance, we just got rook f2. And you're like, what are you doing here, buddy? I think you wandered into the wrong part of town. You know, we 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 better beat you up. Let me see that wallet. That watch looks nice. Let me take that watch too off of you. And uh, well. MVL consolidates and he wins the pawn. Now MVL is just, you know, up a pawn. But, of course, Donchenko has a very active piece, you know, ac active piece on c1. This forces queen takes a6. Uh, if you take on d1 with check and attacking my knight, what does my knight do? Of course, I drop back. And now, uh, well, queen comes back to d4 and this. So Donchenko has now queen knight and five versus queen knight and five. Okay. MVL, of course, uh, does... Uh, what super GMs do in equal positions, he just keeps playing a little bit. He doesn't, you know, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, let me give a check. Let me come back, offering a trade of queens. No trade of queens. B4, let me push my pawns. I'm gonna bring my king to the middle. Very equal position. Very equal game. But let me push my pawns. I'll push my pawns on the queen side. I got two on one. I got two on one. What's the harm in pushing my pawns here, right? And trying to create a pass pawn. Knight d5, offering a trade of knights. Queen d4, wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, this is hit, this is hit, this is a pin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Queen e7, okay. Now, now my king's safe. I got the pawns. They're gonna roll. Oh, I'll take that. What, you're gonna take on a4? Well, I'm gonna take on h5. Now it's a four on three. Magnus Carlsen won one of these yesterday. I think I could do it too. Watch me do it. Watch me do it better than Magnus Carlsen. The hope here for black is to trade enough pawns that you get into a drawn endgame, like a three on two like this. So MVL plays queen f3, and let's just see what happens. Did Donchenko seamlessly draw this game? No. Donchenko recreationally allowed the pawn to walk all the way down the board. Wait a second, let's see an instant replay of that. f5, g5, queen e1. Not realizing that actually after the move g6, uh... This is very difficult for black. Black's gotta play king f8 now. It's the only move, apparently. 
to try to prolong the game a little bit. Maybe you give a check on a8 like this, king e7, queen b7, and black has to apparently play king to d6, volunteering to part ways with this pawn because it's a perpetual check. Apparently. Apparently. Apparently, black had to do that. Black didn't do that. He brought back the queen. Now MVL plays queen d5 check and picks up the pawn. Now it's a three on one. Now MVL's winning. I don't know how this happened. I don't know if it was time trouble, but uh, he walks his king up, protects himself. Again, this is not what you want, even though you get a check because I go queen h4. I move out of the way. I check you and I'm winning. So we've seen a couple of days now where in a queen and pawn endgame, the pawn majority and the advancement, the coordinated advancement on one side of the board basically did uh, the other opponent in. And then that's a nice move, f6. That's a nice move, setting up queen to c8. Look at that. So if you take, I have queen c8. And if g takes f6, I have queen c8 anyway. King g7, queen d7. And my pawn covering these two squares is going to win the game. A little boomerang technique, a little check action. No notice, notice, notice. You're not just going here to give a mate. Because then you get mated. You need to give a check. Be more forcing. King g7, queen d7. And then you deliver mate in the next few moves. So a nice game from MVL because he was on the verge of, of just disaster. He would have had 3 out of 10 had he lost this game, I think. That is not what the leader of the candidates wants, obviously. So looking for him to get back into the event. Now, um... La, uh, we will also take a look at the game between Andrei Yesipenko and David Anton. Andrei Yesipenko, uh, half a point out of first place. And playing against uh, this Spanish number one, who is having an okay tournament, I think. But Andrei is having a fantastic tournament. This one is Spanish. Uh, with a very strange move on move eight. A move that actually looks like a mouse slip. It looks like you meant to move your bishop further. So the bishop goes out to e3, bishop g5. But uh, bishop d2 is uh, the move that's, that gets played. Whatever. I don't know what they're doing nowadays with their opening preparation. Rookie one. It's still not so clear, by the way, why you haven't moved your knight, but okay. It's still not so clear why you ha Hold up. What? 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 Huh? What? 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 Uh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you, my friends. I don't know why he did that. I don't know. I'm supposed to be your, 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 you know, your, your guardian angel. I'm supposed to take you through the land of the complications. I don't know why he did this. I don't know what the big brain idea here was. But let's just pretend that didn't happen. Knight f1, knight g3. This is much more common in a closed position to route your knight to a nice square, kick out the bishop. Okay, Andre. Okay, you just trolling with me at this point, man. You just, I mean, what do you want? You want to just show your opponent, you know, how bishops go? Bop, bop, bop. What do you think? You're so strong. You just wait. Okay, okay. Okay, rook c1. Nice, nice, nice. What's going to happen on that? There's going to be a pawn explosion at some point. But Andre, in the, meanwhile, in the meantime, uses the outflanking technique to secure control over the f5 square and jump a knight into f5. How long has it been since someone moved a pawn? Okay, still no pawn moves. <gasps> Yay! Okay, take on c4. Nice. So Andre wants to close down the queen side and maybe attack on the king side. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see it, I, I smell, oh, the bishop's been taken, knight comes back to h4, king to g2. Are we, what are we doing? We trying to push on this side of the board? What are we trying to do? This is all under control, no one's coming in here, we're all good. Okay. Oh, oh! Oh, Andre had us fooled the whole time, he actually wanted to play on the queen side. Wait a minute, isn't this controlled three times? Doesn't matter, you could take it, go ahead and take it. I'm gonna break through now, it's a pawn break creating an opportunity to attack the opponent, and now we take back. You say, Levy, why didn't he go back to c8? Like, so the knight in the, in the, the wall, because you just take. Yeah, but then what about this? Well, yeah, but ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, knight takes e5, of course, removing the defender of the central pawn. If queen e5, we have bishop f4. Don't doubt the vibe of Andrei Yesipenko. He knows what he's doing. And that is why... Knight b5 happened, but now we take back on b4. It's a very complicated position, but white is making steady progress. Now the bishop is back. Mm. So, David Anton decides to sacrifice a pawn that Andre doesn't even take. He activates his light scored bishop. This is the difference between the two bishops. Look at this guy. This guy's living in an apartment with no windows. This guy's living on a penthouse. He sees the valley from his balcony, 
right? This bishop on c4. Rook takes c3. All right, you take my pawn, but look at me. Let me activate this bishop so I can kick your knight out of the center, and let me take that pawn in a6. And you know what my guardian angel is? This pawn. This is my pride and joy. This is the car that I take out of my penthouse garage and then drive 150 miles an hour. Don't actually do that. That's speeding. You'll get in a lot of trouble. Um, that's like criminal speeding. That's like the worst kind. You go like, go to, you lose your license. And uh, well, what did Andre do for the rest of the game? He pushed his C-pawn, ladies and gentlemen. It's not too complicated. Well, up until he got blocked and then he spent the rest of the game trying to get rid of the blockade and then creating a, a concept of two weaknesses. So in the end game, you'll notice that a person who has the advantage will often play on both sides of the board. This bishop defends the pawn, but also pressures the king. So Andre sacrificed his h-pawn to activate his queen and threaten queen takes pawn because of this pin. And, uh, well, on this move, uh, David Anton resigned because, frankly, he can't defend his position. Uh, Rome is being infiltrated for all, from all three sides here. Like, literally, this is actually fascinating. Look at this. The furthest points of infiltration all meet at the same crossroads. This is beautiful, honestly. Queen h6, rook a8. It's just double-sided invasion, and the pawn on c6 is a nice bonus. That bishop on d5 is such a killer. Fantastic game from Andre, who continues to crush in this event. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the game of Anish Giri versus the number two Polish player, Radoslav Wojtaszek. Let's go, Anish. Let's see what you got. d4. All right, baby. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh! Anish Giri said, listen, I got a couple of courses, but... Gotham Chess also has a London course. Link in the description below, by the way. Uh, this is the second time I plug one of my courses in this video. So E3, C5, Knight of 3. This is all theory, all well-known stuff. The big question is, where's this bishop going? And it goes to G4. Sometimes black blocks it in. Anish Giri plays an early queen maneuver, taking advantage of the fact that the bishop has abandoned the B7 post. Now, when I used to teach this to my six-year-old students, black would then lose this pawn, and then lose this knight, and then lose this rook, and then lose this pawn, and then, like, get checkmated. But Wojtaszek is a little bit stronger than some of my beginner six-year-old students, and plays the move queen to c8, which defends the pawn. So now Anish just naturally develops the rest of his pieces and castles, and, uh, you know, gets bored, so he brings the queen back to the home square because he's trying to set up the pieces for the next game. On a serious note, what he's doing here is he's threatening to move knight to e5 and maybe dc5 to expand on the queen side. Let us see how Anish Giri plays the game when nothing has been traded. Right? First he prepares with his rook. Queen d8 goes back. Wojtaszek <laughs> really liked bringing the queen back to the home square. And now dc5, knight c5, and a pawn advancement on this side of the board. Knight goes back to d7. And now Anish plays the move a3 because he wants to give every single pawn in his position a chance to participate. This pawn defends this pawn, which enables this pawn to move. So that's why knight b6 happens. And now Anish plays rook c1, seemingly preparing the move c4. But then Wojtaszek says, I'm going to play e5. So Anish says, I kind of like that idea. Let me play the move e4 so that when you play e5, your center is destabilized. And we get e4, e5, the pawns clash, and the bishop retreats. Wojtaszek retreats his bishop, solidifying his center. And here Anish Giri plays an absolutely fascinating move, which will be very, very, very instructive. And I say that a lot, but pay attention. Anish Giri trades his dark squared bishop for the knight of Wojtaszek. And you say, why would he do that? Why would he do that? Well... What this does is it destabilizes the light squares. You've given away your dark squared bishop for a knight. A knight controls light and dark. So now white has three pieces that fight for the light squares. Black only has two pieces that fight for the light squares. The dark squares are pretty well blocked. You'll notice the dark squared bishop is not really playing. So Anish goes here, here, and then plays the move a4 to get his pawn out of the danger of the rook. He didn't just push his pawn because he wants to show Wojtaszek he knows how to do that. He's getting his a pawn out of danger. So we get pawn to f5. And now b5 kicking the knight out of the way of the center. But Wojtaszek is down for a fight. So pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, bishop takes, b takes. And again Anish plays bishop, a, a, a trade of pieces. Why? Because Wojtaszek has to take with a pawn. If he takes with a queen, let's not forget that in all of this, this rook sees this bishop. So pawn takes, leaving Wojtaszek with two pawn islands. Anish has two pawn islands of his own, but... The light squares. It's now a battle of light versus dark squares, right? The knight can jump into the light squares. The bishop cannot be held accountable. So the bishop covers the entrance points of the knight on the dark squares. So we get rook to e6 infiltrating on the light squares. It's a fascinating game of color complexes. Now the pieces infiltrate on the light squares to a dark square target. Look at that. Rook takes b6. So we get rook takes a4. It's a nice and balanced game. 
And what ends up happening is we get this. We get a position of two rooks and a knight versus two rooks and a bishop, okay? Completely symmetrical structure. The one advantage that Anish Giri has is he has activity. He has a lot more active pieces. And in endgames, rooks on the seventh rank are very, very annoying. But in this case, the bishop covers. So Anish is going to use his flank pawn as an infiltration decoy. And if black ever pushes the pawn to stop him, two dark squared pawns means the light square on g6 is going to be infiltrated by the knight. Nobody in the black position can counter that. And that is why Anish was able to slowly improve his position, avoiding the trade of rooks, avoiding the trade of rooks, repeating once to gain some time on the clock, but avoiding the trade of rooks and finding a way to stack his rooks. He's trying to make some progress here. And now this is the moment of truth, trying to create paradoxical problems for his opponent. Rook to a2, Wojtaszek activates his rook and tries to go for the f2 square by camping his bishop on the other side of the board, maintaining defense. Rook goes back to a6, now we get knight to h4. Who's gonna guard the f5 pawn? Who's gonna guard the f5 pawn? If you play rook to f6, you're very passive, but probably you're hanging on here. That's the truth. White will slowly try to improve the position, but you're hanging on, most likely. Uh, maybe you're still gonna go h6 looking to sacrifice the h-pawn for the f-pawn, but you should be okay just because this bishop is from a faraway land. But then we got this. And that move allowed white to play h6. And now you have a serious problem. Because after the move f4 trying to break into white's position, I play g4 and I don't take your pawn. If I take your pawn, I activate your rook. I open your rook's vision. Now your rook stares into its own pawn. And then Anishigiri finished this off in style with rook takes h7. Look at that. The game ends ultimately on a light square because king takes h7 will be met with rook d7 check. If the king goes back to g8, h7, king h8. And what did I say a long time ago, ladies and gentlemen? Knight to g6 would decide the game. A rook sacrifice using your flank pawn as an advancement, your knight to jump in, and look at what color complex ended the game. Every piece on a light square. And with that, Anish Giri won yet another game in his Tata Steel campaign this year. And my goodness, after 10 rounds, we have a solo leader for the first time in a while. Anish Giri leads the Tata Steel 2021 chess tournament. He's got seven points out of 10. Andrei Yesipenko up there, half a point out of first. And Fabiano Caruana, as well as Ali Reza Ferruja, with six and a half.